It's a calm morning. I'm on Kitts Beach in Vancouver. It's slightly overcast and very mild for January. It's absolutely wind still. The ocean is flat, just a bit rippled in places. Ducks are quietly floating on the water. I'm standing among some large rocks full of barnacles and seaweed. The water moves calmly through crevices. The barnacles put out their fingers to feed on the water. The tiny clicking sounds that you hear are the meeting of the water and the barnacles. It trickles and clicks and sucks and... The city is roaring around these tiny sounds, but it's not masking them. I could shock you or fool you by saying that the soundscape is this loud. But it is more like this. The view is beautiful. In fact, it is spectacular. So the sound level seems more like this. It doesn't seem that loud. But I'm trying to listen to those tiny sounds in more detail now. Suddenly, the background sound of the city seems louder again. It interferes with my listening. It occupies all acoustic space, and I can't hear the barnacles in all their tininess. It seems too much effort to filter the city out. Luckily, we have bandpass filters and equalizers. We can just go into the studio and get rid of the city. Pretend it's not there. Pretend we are somewhere far away. These are the tiny, the intimate voices of nature, of body, of dream, of the imagination. You're still hearing the barnacle sounds, and already they're changing. Alfred Tomatis says that high frequencies charge our brain and give us energy. I often hear these tiny sounds in my dreams. Those are the healing dreams. In one dream, women living in an ancient mountain village were weaving the most beautiful silken fabric. It sounded like a million tiny voices, whispering, swishing, clicking, sizzling.
In another dream, when I entered a stone cottage, I entered a soundscape made by four generations of a peasant family sitting around a large wooden table eating and talking. Smacking and clicking and sucking and spitting and telling and biting and singing and laughing and weeping and kissing and gurgling and whispering. In another dream, I heard bullets tinkling, bouncing like tiny marbles. A man was pursuing me with a gun. I was frightened. But the bullets tinkled. Metallic, tiny, seductive semen tinkling all around me. Like in Zenakis Concrete PH2, made from the sounds of the discharge of smoldering charcoal, tinkling all over the Brussels pavilion, like needles darting from everywhere, as Zenakis says. You can hear excerpts of that piece right now. In another dream, sitting in the car with a woman friend, I heard sounds of glass blinking and tinkling, sparkling. On the car radio they announced that it was Mozart, the way Tomatis wants us to hear Mozart, tinkling and sparkling. These were the healing dreams, energizing. As soon as I make space to hear sounds like this, or to dream them, then I feel the strength to face the city again, or even to be playful with it. Play with a monster, then I can face the monster. <laughs> 